EV sales for Kia, Hyundai, Volkswagen are significantly down in the United States last month. But the opposite is happening in Europe, where EV sales have risen nearly 30% and now are on track for their best sales figures in years, say many of these European companies. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching the Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. What's happening here in Europe? Well, Tesla sales are down enormously, unfortunately for Tesla. Yes, they've done well in some countries, but um, in places like Germany, sales have fallen enormously. However, electric cars are picking up in Europe with 305,000 plug-in vehicles being registered in Europe in May. That's an increase of 34% year over year and it's fastest growth rate since August of 2023. If we were to believe that some of the media in the world, well, EV sales are falling, then actually that's clearly not the case. This 2025 growth rate is accelerating. Now at 24% year over year, or 1.4 million vehicles, which means that after the so-so year of 2024, says Clean Technica, Europe's EV market is back on track. Tesla, they were down 31% in the month of May in Europe. June was a little better though, with EV sales from Tesla spiking a little bit thanks to the new Tesla Model Y. Anyhow, the overall market is actually stagnant. So car sales in Europe haven't really gone up, but EV sales continue to grow. In fact, year over year, the growth rate for EVs is, is actually just over 28% at 195,000 units in the month of May. But in total for the year, it looks as though it's about 30%. Now, because there are no taxes on Chinese-made plug-in hybrids, plug-in hybrids, well, this is one of the main reasons anyway, plug-in hybrids sales have gone massively upwards as well, increasing by a 48% year on year in May. In China, the opposite's happening. EV sales are rising far faster than plug-in hybrids, but in Europe, plug-in hybrid sales are rising quicker. That shows that plug-in hybrids have grown at their fastest rate in over three years. So what are the most popular ones? Well, one of them is the BYD CLU plug-in hybrid. Like I said, no EV tariffs, on plug-in hybrids from China. The others are Volkswagen and Toyota. So percentage-wise, what are the actual numbers? Well, plug-ins, including plug-in hybrids and EVs, are 28% for all of Europe in May. I believe it's closer to 30% for June, but we don't have the full numbers yet. Fully electric is 18% and 10% plug-in hybrids. So you can see here, still almost two to one for EVs versus plug-in hybrids. In terms of year to date, so for the first five months of the year, 17% of all cars sold were fully electric and around 9% were plug-in hybrids. Now looking at these actual sales numbers, what was the best selling EV or plug-in hybrid? This is the full list of EVs and plug-in hybrids in Europe. The number one best selling EV is actually still the Model Y by a fairly wide margin with 10,630 sales from the Model Y in the month of May. Now, sales for the Model Y did increase significantly in June. I'll have an update for June very soon. Skoda Elrock was in second place with 9,400 deliveries. Not actually that far behind the Model Y. In third was a BYD CLU, predominantly the plug-in hybrid version with 7,000 deliveries. In fourth, the Volkswagen ID4 was sitting at 6,923, followed by the Volkswagen ID7, 6,664. Another Volkswagen, the ID3, 6,648, Skoda Enyaq next, 5,400, Audi Q6 e-tron, 5,400, and the Renault 5 was next with 5,300. Kia EV3 was in 10th place with 5,250, BMW iX1 next with 4,900, Volkswagen Tiguan plug-in hybrid was in 12th place, 13th place was the Volvo XC60 plug-in hybrid, this, the Toyota CHR plug-in hybrid was next in 14th place. Audi Q4 e-tron, 3,990. That's a fully electric car. Citroen EC3 next. Volvo EX30. Audi A6 e-tron. Ford Cougar plug-in hybrid. And Mercedes GLC plug-in hybrid. Now you can see here, the only Tesla is in first place, but it's the only one here. There's no Tesla Model 3. In addition to that, you can also see that most of these best-selling cars are electric. 
Now, out of the top 10, in fact, out of the top 11, only one of them is a plug-in hybrid, and that's the BYD CLU. So really, the only plug-in hybrids selling well uh, in Europe are actually, well, the only one selling really quite well is actually Chinese BYD. Obviously, I assume that if BYD's uh, EVs didn't have these massive tariffs put on them, BYD would probably have a top 10, 10 selling EV as well. It's also worth pointing out that Xpeng um, and some other Chinese manufacturers, such as Great Wall Motors and MG, their sales have skyrocketed in Germany in particular, but also across Europe over the past few months. I think, guys, for me, what's also interesting is Toyota having no cars in here except for one. You know, the only Toyota here is the Toyota CHR Fev, which is, in my opinion, a wacky car. Anyway, 4,100 sales. So out of the top 20 best selling plug in hybrids and EVs in Europe, only one of them was a Toyota. Kind of shows you where things are heading, I think, for Toyota overall. But it is kind of good to see some of these German brands do well. The Volkswagen Group struggling so so much recently. At least, you know, they're selling EVs quite well in Europe. So that's nice to see. However, how do Tesla sales compare to last year, right? May of 2024, looking at May of 2025, sales are actually down by 6%. And that's in spite of the fact that there's a brand new model coming out from Tesla. Is the issue here Tesla's factory not being able to produce enough cars? I don't think so. I think Tesla could have produced more than 10,600 Model Y Junipers in the month of May. I think politics have caused a bit of a, a slide in Tesla sales. That said, from the numbers I've been seeing, Tesla did deliver more than 10,600 EVs in the month of June. Still though, Tesla's clearly struggling considerably across Europe. And um, yeah, it's been a, a certainly a challenging environment for them this year. Let's look at the numbers for January to May, for the whole year, right? For all of 2025. Tesla Model Y is in first place. Actually, a fair bit ahead of second place, 45,650 deliveries. Second place, the Volkswagen ID4 with 34,000 deliveries. So still a gap of 11,000, pretty significant between first and second place, but nowhere near the kind of gaps we've seen, what well, we saw last year in Europe anyway. Third was the Volkswagen ID7. Fourth, the Renault 5. I quite like the Renault 5. 31,000 sales. Next was the Volkswagen ID3, followed by the Skoda Enyaq. The, the Kia EV3 was next. Tesla Model 3 was in eighth place. Um, so surprising to see such bad delivery numbers for, for Tesla in May. Probably didn't have any shipments from China with a new Tesla Model 3 um, coming across. Next was the BBD CLU in ninth place, followed by the BMW iX1. You can see here the top 10 best-selling EVs and plug-in hybrids for all of the, the entire year only one of them was a plug-in hybrid. That was a BYD CLU. 11th place though was the Volvo XC60 plug-in hybrid, followed by the Skoda Elrock EV, the Audi Q4 e-tron EV, the Audi Q6 e-tron EV, the Citroen EC3 and EV, Volkswagen Tiguan FEV plug-in hybrid, Ford Cougar FEV plug-in hybrid, Volvo EX30 EV, Toyota CHR plug-in hybrid, and the BMW i4. Now, looking at the major brands, which brands were doing the best in terms of overall EV and plug-in hybrid sales? The Volkswagen was in first place with 11.5%, followed by BMW with 9%, Mercedes-Benz with 7%, uh, Volvo with 5.8%, Audi clearly really struggling with 5.2%, and the rest of the market was a total of 61.5%. I believe, I'm going to give my, my forecast here. I'm curious to know what you guys think. Where will EV sales be by the end of next year? What will the percentages be? We're looking at about 18% now. My prediction by the end of next year in Europe, we'll, we'll be seeing around 35%, nearly double what we're seeing today. I know that sounds crazy. It's only a year and a half away, but a fair few factors are going to combine to encourage this to happen. Sometimes when you go past pivot points to certain points in, you know, where people get stuck, um, certain points where things kind of, don't progress for a while and all of a sudden they skyrocket. I think that's what we're at. I think we're at the point where EV sales, EVs have traditionally been more expensive by a fair margin than internal combustion cars in Europe. And of course, in China, that's not the case at all. In fact, often the EV version is cheaper. But in Europe, EV prices are coming down. As more vehicles are made, you know, when you double production, Moore's law, generally the price to produce that one product comes down by about 20%. So we're going to see more manufacturers being able to reduce prices as a result of that battery prices as well. 
we've just discovered have come down by 30% worldwide over the last 12 months. That will put less pressure on these manufacturers in terms of the actual raw material costs to make the cars. So I believe that EVs will come down in price. They'll be at about price parity within the next six to 12 months in Europe. As a result, more and more people will say, well, okay, EVs, price parity is here. Range continues to grow. Charging speed continues to go up. Let's just join in now. It's time. It's time to go. It's time to to actually move on to the new technology. What do you guys think? Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you share my optimism for Europe? Thanks for watching. Thank you.